well, we did expect a few more people to be joining us today, but it's no problem. We'll start off and maybe they'll come and join us in a little bit. The webinar today is really about BrainPop, and I hope most of you will have come across BrainPop before. You'll see Moby the robot there who features in all our BrainPop movies. What we're going to be talking about today is Google Apps, and we're very lucky to be joined by Ian Addison. You might know Ian from uh, Twitter. I hope you already follow him on Twitter. He was one of the first people that people suggested to me that I should find when I started trying to learn about technology and how it's used in education. So if you don't already know Ian from Twitter, I definitely recommend you go and find him there. He's always full of loads of great ideas and suggestions and helpful advice. You can also find Ian speaking around the country at various conferences. Um, so you might see him at one of those places. And recently, um, Ian has become a published author and if he doesn't plug his fabulous book, ICT Essentials for Primary Teachers, at some point during this webinar, then I will do it at the end. <laughs> so I'm going to hand it over to Ian, he's doing the main part of the webinar today. He's been using BrainPop for a couple of years in his classroom, and I think using Google Apps for at least a year. So I'm going to switch the microphone over to Ian, and he will be handling most of the continuing webinar. Over to you, Ian. Hi there, hopefully you can all hear me uh, nice and clearly um, and the PowerPoint is still all shared. Uh, if you do have any questions as we go through, feel free to use the chat box um, and I'll try and answer them and you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens as we go through. Um, what I want to begin with is sort of talk about what Google Apps is and what it can do and then how it links in with, with BrainPop as well. So uh, let me just uh, close this PowerPoint on here, don't, want to, uh, don't worry about saving that. And I then need to just uh, share my new my new screen instead. So start sharing, and if this all works, you should then see your screen. Um, just quickly, as, as I said, you know, uh, there's my book very very quickly. Writing styles, potential ICT, packed full of loads of stuff. Um, perfectly priced at twelve ninety nine. Feel free to go and use that if you want to. Uh, so Google Apps, what is it? Um, well, it's it's a it's a suite of tools that is um, completely free. Uh, you have to pay sort of six pound a year for the, uh, the web address. So uh, we have a web address at the top. We are St John the Baptist Primary School, and we've got St John's Apps.co.uk, and that's our um, that's our address. So we pay um, around six pound a year for that, and that is the only cost for Google Apps. Um, you can sometimes pay people to go and set it up. I set them. Up, I set it up for schools if they don't want to go and do it. But what I've um, started doing on my blog. Uh, is also um, is updating my Google Apps setup guide. So I posted part one signing up this week, and then the idea is that over the next couple of weeks I'll go through and redo my guide that shows how to use Google Apps. So don't be scared about um, it being technical to set up. It takes you know a few hours to do. You can follow my guide step by step, or you can pay someone to do it if you want to. Um, that's basically the way to do it. When you um, get Google Apps, you get a number of tools. Now some of them are on this screen. So you get Google Mail, Google Docs, Google Calendar, Google Websites. Um, instead of you using like your own personal Gmail account, what Google Apps does is it gives you the ability to create users across your whole school. So we've got 300 and something users. And instead of them all having different usernames, um, I can set the naming convention. So for example, first name dot last name at St. John's apps uk. So the important thing is choosing a good email address um, rather than having St. John the Baptist Primary School uk it is too long to type in. So the apps bit gives you that umbrella admin panel that overlooks everything else so you can uh, manage the mail, manage the documents and so on through that. What we've then done and done at the school is we've made this sort of, this landing page here. So this is what every child gets to. And they do this from our website. All we do is we've linked this on our website and then when they get to here they get their Google Mail, their Google Docs, their Google Websites. We then use calendars with children, so that they don't see that on there. Uh, we've also got links to things like WordPress blog. Obviously, we've got links to our brain pop as well. Um, a few other things on there. So, for example, things like Picasa for editing images and Purple Mash for um, use, you know, for creativity. Um, we've also got links to things like Zooburst and Storybird for, for story writing. So, what we've done is we've kind of made our own learning platform VLE Cloud thing. Um, using a mixture of tools that are free and are paid for. I'm not saying every free tool is amazing, I'm not saying all paid for ones are rubbish. 
you know, there is, we use a mixture as a school, and that is, I think, the best way to do it. So once you get signed up to Google Apps, you get a, a console that looks a bit like this one, and you can then look at the users, uh, sort out different settings, and so on. And you can see along the top, I can go to my mail, my calendar, my websites, uh, etc. and go through there. Um, you can also create users in bulk. So if you've ever done that through a CSV Excel spreadsheet, you can do that quite easily through there. If not, there's a guide on my website. You can do it. If you and again, like I said, if you're you know don't feel techy enough to do it, um, you can always pay someone as well. So um, the four main tools are Mail, Doc, Calendar, Website. There are others, but the Mail I just load this, and that's in John Dat's page. is free for everyone to look at. So I'll just put that in the chat box. You'll see there, and um, you won't be able to go very far because it will ask you for a login. Um, if you want a login, um, give me a shout later on, and I'll make a demo one for you. So we have our email, and this is email for our school. Um, generally used on here for sharing uh, documents, etc., and sharing websites and, and so on. So um, what we've got on here is some of the children. One of them found a maths uh, times table website and told me today. He said, oh, "I had a great times table website I've used." We're focusing on times tables in, in my maps class. And I said, there's no point in writing it down. Why don't you email it to me and I'll put the link on the website? So he went home straight away. Here's the website for times table and he emailed it to me. The good thing with this is that you can control this email so that it's locked down and so that they can only send and receive emails from inside the school. So anyone with this domain up here, in the top right, stjohndaps.co.uk, my children can send it to anyone with St. John Daps and receive it. You know, from anyone with St. John's apps, but they can't um, they can't send it out anywhere else. My staff can, and for them it's a full email. Also, what you'll notice is, is this is just this is just email, so it's not a system that's been designed for children, um, which we found before to be quite you know usually quite dumbed down. This is a grown-up product for grown-ups, and it works you know quite well. You do compose. If I type Mickey, you know there's Mickey Mouse straight away. It helps. You know it gives you the account. It's a proper email system. Also, if you ever have any problems with things like Google Apps, you just Google it because there's 20 million people using it around the world. Mm -hmm. So, you know, problems are quite limited. So that's the mail, which is, you know, quite useful. Um, Google Docs is uh, in one that you can use for various different tools. Let's try uh, this one. Um, has anyone used Google Docs before? Give a quick uh, tick or thumb up, thumbs up if you have. Uh, a couple of people. Let's, let's try one. Let me just show you the power of um, Google Docs very quickly. If I go to create and I want to create a document, so I did this with my guided reading group, so let's just call it guided reading. Really. Uh, and the way that we did it was I sat down with, you know, we had some laptops out and I asked them a question. And yes, I could have done this on a whiteboard, but this was a, a slightly different way of doing it. Um, what I did was I asked them a question and I got them all to just put their answer in a box. So I'm just going to do a similar thing, so name and where are you from? So with this document at the moment, it's just personal, just to me. I can share this and make it available to anybody. So I could change it so that people in my school can see it. What I could actually do is add just other people. So here's Mickey. Me and Mickey can go and share a document. What I want to do, though, is I want to share it so all of you guys can go and have a look. So if I click on Change, Public on the Web, anyone can edit this document and save. When I copy this link into the chat window in the bottom left, if you click on that link now, you can pop up, you can put your name in here. And there's one other viewer, uh, who's that? And someone's coming very quickly. Uh, so you can add your name and you can all edit this document live. So we did that at Guided Reading. We wrote the perfect answer to the, these questions we were looking at. Uh, there you go, Jude. <laughs> uh, so Jude's basically in there quite quickly. Click on the link and you can then type your text. So it's a great way of um, collaborating live at the same time. We did this for planning yesterday. We were looking at our different topics for um, the next half term, and we all sort of sat there. I was adding science planning while someone else was adding math planning, um, etc. So that was all kind of happening uh, at the same time. So you can do that with um, Google Docs. You can the other docs that include um, things like presentations or spreadsheets. So again, we can all go on and uh, look at the information at the same time, which works very well. Anyone else going to join this link? If you click on it in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see it coming up. 
enjoy making sure people are actually listening in the race. No one expected all the participation, did they? That's what the problem is. Uh, what you can do, once you've created this document, um, you can also, you can do a few things, a few cool things with it. Imagine we've all shared our information. Imagine that this was go and find five adverbs. Every child writes down five adverbs, uh, five adverbs or five adjectives or whatever it needs to be. You go to file, make a copy. You can then copy that and then go and use those, that huge word bank you've gathered, to then go and write your sentences, go and write your stories, and so on. What I can also do is publish it to the web. So when I press publish, start, you get lots of are you sure, are you sure, are you sure. I can give a link and I can give an, um, an embed code. So I can check that onto my blog. So if we've written a story as a table all collaboratively, I and mean, you can have 50 people, but to be honest, five or six is maximum, especially with kids. Um, you could publish that onto your blog, onto your website, and so on, and have you know be a great way of sharing the writing that's been going on um, in the class. So that works very, very well. So Google Docs are brilliant, you know, except for, for sort of sharing different things. I'll come to the BrainPop quizzes in a minute. Um, we'll, we'll look at that and how that works and how BrainPop does link. Um, other things on there, things like form for a spreadsheet, a form for collecting data, and so on. I can give you a questionnaire. You can fill in and all the data comes back to me. Um, presentation works in a very, very similar way. If I just choose, let's go for that one, and then share. This works well as a research thing. If I share this and make it public, again, anyone can edit. So anyone that has this link, which I'm copying for you guys, can then log in and add a slide. So all you do is you add a slide. So um, all about us. I want to press the plus to add a slide, um, and you can then add your information on there. And what you can do is you can then soon see once people click on that link, anyone's going to do it, um, then other people can join in, add their own slides. You can make a collaborative presentation. Now we're doing this with what you near know, six of us that are in this chat room. But what you can do is, I've done this with uh, groups of children, so I've, instead of having three laptops and having a problem that only one can type because PowerPoint is just on that computer and it says the files read only, they can all access the document on their computer. So um, the children can sit there and add, up, add their own slideshows as they go along um, and you know, research things together. So i just find uh, one example, let me just come out of frame up there. Uh, it, was, I think it was Catherine of Aragon, I think. One of my children did, if I can find it. Um, let's let me find it. It was a presentation, what was it called Brain Pop? Presentation, Catherine Howard. Maybe. There's you know, one in six chance to get the right one. So, one group, um, I set them the task of using Google Docs to go and research one of the wives. Each table had a different wife uh, to go and look at. So, what they were doing is you can see the writing on here is completely different abilities on each page because that was my lower ability child, that's slightly more able, but they were all collaborating. <laughs> Not a very historical picture, but still. They were all collaborating and adding information on their group presentation. Yes, there are spelling mistakes and so on, but that was their group's work. And again, what I can do with that is I can publish that to the web, embed it into my site, I can share the link with you, I can make a copy and so on. Also, if it's collaborative, I can go and see revision history. So imagine one child made a mistake and deleted the page. I can go back through and see when Charlie or Francesca went and made some edits. So if you click, it does sort of show you. You can go right back to the first sort of few days they did it, um, and you can see it was just four slides. I could restore that if anyone went wrong. So it changes it as you go along. It's brilliant. And yes, I know I'm kind of flying through all of this, but it's a, a half-hour webinar to my brain pop, and I need to give you some laps over you first. Um, Google Calendar, not a huge amount of use in school to be honest. We've uh, we've done some bits on here. Uh, we've got you know various events and etc. We've got uh, if I just do that, that makes it a bit easier. Uh, so you can see we've had different uh, events on there. I can turn my calendars off. I can. We've got PTA one. We've got sport ones. We've got all kinds of uh, events that we use at the school. Um, all appear on there, and then those will actually feed out onto um, our school website. Which if I just find a new page. And um, all of those events we put onto our calendar, we then feed out onto uh, the website there, and they also go onto uh, a school calendar here. 
So we're very much in our school. We want to post things, write things once, and post them a million places. So when an event happens, it automatically goes onto our blog because it's embedded, and you can see it has all those calendars on there. Um, some being used more than others, football and clubs, as well as whole school, but the PCA generally, you know, just using it for a few things. The calendars are quite cool as well. The one that I really like though is the tool that for me is the most powerful one because doc, docs are brilliant but they take a little bit of getting used to um, and you need to sort of think in different ways. Uh, web, website design is one of those that you probably aren't doing at the moment in primary school. Um, you might have a tool, I know some of these use front page or some have made of one in Word and so on. Um, I just want to show you some of these websites. Again, made by my class but um, year, this is year three, four. So, this link is completely open, so if I'll just copy this in again, but obviously if you looked at our blog you'd have seen these already. So this is a list of the children in my school, in my class, sorry. Um, so if I go through, uh, we can pick any child, so let's go with Charlie. Uh, you can go and see what Charlie's been up to. And yes, again, there are spelling mistakes, but you know what, he's seven, he's made a website. So I was 22 the first time I made a website, so he's beaten me by a, a long time. We've got a glossary on there. You know, beautiful is when something looks nice. London is a big city. So he's, still, he's getting there with a few things. Uh, he's got some information. You can see that he has linked the word London to his glossary where he's put what it is. And he hasn't quite got the concept of glossary because it's not, you know, it maybe doesn't work very well. Um, but again, you can see he's linked some ideas. He's put some pictures on there and he's made some website, you know, he's made his website based around Tudor information. Uh, if you go to a uh, probably better example, you know, Francesca's probably my most able child um, in my class. She's made a, a title page where you can go onto any of these pages. Um, not only is there photos, and again, there's a glossary. There's also a map of the Mary Rose Museum in Portsmouth. We embedded that and we looked at how that worked. Um, again, spelling mistakes, things like writing with an R, which uh, she'll get married out for tomorrow. Um, Henry eight six wives. Not only is there information about the wives, but also we've been, we've been learning the horrible history songs. So we've got um, that embedded from YouTube uh, on there, and you can press play, and it works no problem. And again, if you know if I wanted to share that, it's all public. The way these sites work is I can make it so that anyone can find and, and view them. It's only me and Francesca that can edit. I could change it so that only Francesca can make it, only Francesca can see it. So although it's a website, you can make it just for one person. So sites are a fantastic tool for um, sharing information and, and researching and presenting it in a different way. Lots of our children have used it instead of sort of PowerPoint, you know, and instead of the Prezi and Poplar and so on. They're uh, using it as a way of presenting information, which is fantastic. So that's kind of a very, very, very quick overview of, um, of Google Apps. Uh, if they, if you got any more questions, feel free and do you know visit my blog um, and you know contact me. Uh, I've done lots of Google Apps training, set Google Apps up for lots of schools. Um, always kind of going on about it because it is such a, a powerful tool, and where it's free, I mean the, the six pound a year is two users on our old DLE. You know we pay three pound per pupil. This is now completely free, and it's fairly simple to set up. I can help you and so on. You know if you need to. Once you've got Google Apps, what you can do is you can then link your BrainPop account to it, and that's what we're looking at today in the webinar. Um, so you go to the marketplace. Now with Google, there are probably three marketplaces. If you think of one on your Android phone, where you've got the, um, the Google Play Store, that's for apps for your phone. If you've got um, Google Chrome as a web browser, you can go to the marketplace. If I go on here, I've got the Chrome Web Store and I can go to the Chrome Web Store and I can then go and download apps to play. So for example, like when I click on there, you can see I've got Google Drive and TweetDeck and Angry Birds because that was the first one I tested. So I can have these apps that run just through uh, my browser. But the this one uh, on here, this marketplace, is just to link to Google Apps. So I've got three things on here, um, Slide Rocket and Avery, as well as BrainPop. Now what happens is when you choose to add these, Along the top with your mail, drive, etc. When I go to more, you can see that BrainPop is on that list. Now what this does is it gives you a single sign-on access to BrainPop. So um, to add this, if you go to Google Apps Marketplace, and if I continue, 
I can search for Brain Pop. And what you'll find is there's two versions. Now, we're in the UK, we're looking at that one. So you click on Brain Pop UK. It gives you some reviews. You can go through and read the reviews on there if you want to. Um, here you go. One of those mine. Let's check if I've done it properly. That's fine. You get a description of what's happening. And just like on your phone, it tells you what it's getting access to. It tells you there that it's giving you, um, it wants to have read and write access to spreadsheets and read and write access to docs and so on. When you press add it now, and it's free because I'm already a brain pop subscriber. When I press add it now, um, it then says click here to install, are you sure, yes, and so on. I've already got it, so it says return to uh, dashboard. For my children then, whenever they log in, they go to more and then go to BrainPop, and what will happen is it takes them to BrainPop.co.uk, and just, yeah, it just flashed up very quickly saying log in. So I'm logged in as my school, which is useful. Yeah, I mean I don't have to give out my uh, my account to um, to everybody, which which definitely helps. So what I want to do now is not only am I logged in, there's another little benefit. I want to go and uh, take part in a quiz. So um, I'm going to go for a maths quiz. Uh, find a maths video. Let's go for that one on division. And you have the brain pop quizzes. So along with the video and the activity, there's the quiz down here. So I'm going to go for the quiz. And I'm just going to uh, leave that just there for now. So I've got graded, uh, review, or printed. I want the graded quiz. So I've set this for my children to do. They're going to do the quiz, and then I'm going to collect the results. Now, these results, when they're finished, what will happen is they will get put in my Google Drive in a folder in a document called BrainPop. It's called BrainPop UK Quizzes. This is a spreadsheet. Page one gives you some information about how to do it. Page two is all about formulas and how to use you know, the, the spreadsheet. And then along the bottom, what you'll see is there's a tab for each video the children, or each quiz the video, each quiz the children have done. So let's prove that works, he says. Always good to do things live. Let's do a graded quiz on division. I think it's that one. Now obviously I'm not even going to check these. I'm just going to click them through very quickly. I'm bound to get his one, right? Aren't I? So you go through, obviously doing this properly. And then what will happen at the end, after your 10 questions, it says print, email, view, etc., or send to teacher's Google spreadsheet. So if I click on there, I type in my teacher, which is me, I type in their account and press OK. That then sends the results. And then if we all cross our fingers and hope, not done this live, it's called four, that's not bad. Um, on here, can you see that division page has now popped up? So if I click on division, I can see that my student, Ian Addison, first name Ian, last name Addison, scored 40. So I can see what they've done. So you can do these a few times by going to it again, it goes there, and again, it goes there. So you could give these um, quizzes as part of research Go and find out about, and then go and do the quiz, and it collects the information on here. So you can see that I've done this before, and I've you know got 20 on that one, and on there, and Sam uh, went and did one on ecosystems, and I get 70. So it's a nice way of sort of collecting the information. For us, we haven't used that aspect too much. The main bit we're using is the fact that it logs them in straight away. So when my children go to um, this page here, We've just made the link, so brain pop, brain pop, and then what will happen is it will take them straight through, logging them in um, to this account here, and they can then go and um, access uh, the brain pop videos without logging in. So that's kind of a quick, <laughs> very, very quick um, overview of uh, using Google Apps and how to link it to brain pop. Like I said, if you want anything else, then my blog is at ianaddison.net. Um, currently, if you go to top posts, uh, there is a Google Apps guide on there. It's about a year and a half old now, which is why I'm redoing it. It's how to get started with Google Apps. So go and use that if you want to, or follow along on the main page for um, Google Apps. And I'll set, I hopefully by the end of half term, I'll have the complete guide of how to set it up. So if you can wait a week, that'd be perfect. Um, there's also other things on there. So 
things like using digital leaders in school. There's a whole ICT policy there if you want to use that as well, uh, a link to buying the book, etc. So um, that's kind of a, a, like a very quick overview and some bits about me. Um, does anyone have any questions? Just let it all go silent. Any questions at all? I'll just turn the microphone off and see if uh, Jude or Matthew want to jump in with anything. I was going to ask actually, Ian, about um, when you know when you have the mail set up and students can email you through the email system, do you find that uh, you get an awful lot of emails? Is it a lot to manage with all the students being able to email you through the Google domain? Um, not really, no, you can see, I mean, I, ha I haven't done anything on this email today. Um, I've only had one email from a child today. If I go to all mail, let me find the all mail button. Um, if I was to go through, even looking back at till the 18th, so this is what, the last six days, um, lots of shared websites. There's that one's an email from a child, that one's an email from a child, that one is, and that one is. So four emails in six days, it's not a huge amount. Um, when we first did it, if I go back, there were pages and pages and pages because it's the first time we've used email. Of course they're going to be excited. Um, but uh, what we've done is we've talked about um, using it sensibly, using it for a purpose, rather than just, yes, email me and say hello. If you email me and say hello, I'm probably going to ignore it. If you email me and say, I've got a problem with, or I want to talk to you about, or you know, there's a decent purpose to it, then yes, I'll reply. And that's where our writing for a purpose comes in. We've also talked about using it formally. So if you email me, I expect, hi, Mr. Addison, rather than just, you're right, what's going on? You know, I want not maybe full sentences, but more formal than if they um, talk to their friends. So we're actually using a lot of literacy skills um, as we go through as well. Thanks, that, that answers my question. It's just something that I've come across when I've been talking to teachers, that they think maybe if I switch the email on, I'll get diluged with, with emails from all the students, but it sounds like you've set it up and the children know what's expected of them. What you um, So all the children in your school are set up on the Google domain. What, what's the youngest children that, that use the email and use the Google domain system? Um, we use it from year three. Um, I probably would go year two, um, but we have next year one and year two. So it's a, it's a huge, it's, it's definitely different in um, in one two because the year ones are only just out of reception, so they're not you know they're just not at that stage yet. Um, so we start at the year three um, project, and then everyone from year three to year six has it. Um, and to be honest, I know they're all emailing each other because I can go and check it. I don't check it um, mainly because if you know, if Matthew sends an inappropriate message to Jude, then what's Jude going to do? Come and complain to the teacher or forward that message to me. So I don't need to go and check it um, every five seconds, which definitely helps. Um, but we, you know, I, they use it and if a teacher's worried about being deluged by emails, well, they're writing. So, you know, we've talked, we've talked about how to use it and how to use it properly. Talk about the purposes. So we've used email um, as a way of uh, talking to other schools, because although you can do it as uh, lockdown just for your school, you can also enable other domains. So for example, we're St John's apps. We've also enabled it so that anyone at Titchfield, my wife's school, can also email us as well. So we're setting up hem house between two schools, not only five miles away, but the next step is, what about a school in Australia or America? Or And you can start setting up some links with, with those sort of schools as well. But still, it's not completely public. You're still in control of it, and you can control everything, which is great. Um, there are, you know, a couple of drawbacks throughout. But you know, try, sometimes tracking email is a bit tricky. But generally, it works quite well. Um, but like I say, children are the best way of uh, policing it. If they find something they're not happy with, they'll tell you um, within about 10 seconds usually. Uh, just a final question for me. Uh, do you set homework through um, Google Apps or do you not use it in that way? Um, we haven't done it in that way, only because we've got a homework system already um, and there's some things that are working in school and I don't want to kind of go against them. Um, one the way that I do use it for kind of additional work is I was sent a writing competition yesterday and the first thing I did was I forwarded it on to all the children and just said, 
they won't count your injury. If you do, here's this, off you go, get on with it. And I know that out of those 180 children, maybe 10 will enter, but that's 10 that probably wouldn't have got it any other way. And I can tell their teachers about it, but will it ever get to the children? I know if I email the children, it gets to the children, and they'll, you know, they'll go and use it, um, and they'll go. Some will go and enter. Some will do things like hundred word challenge because I've asked them to. Some will um, go and try a website. If I want to try something in school, um, I'll just email the children. So we, um, when I set up that St John's apps page, I sent them the link and said, "What do you think? Is this all right? Do you want to keep this, or should I make some changes?" And a few people suggested some changes, and we changed it. Um, and then I showed the teachers afterwards. Show the children first because it, it always works. But I found that they're quite receptive to me emailing them with ideas. And they also know how to delete it if, they, if I email them too much. Um, but not particularly for homework, just additional uh, sort of extra stuff on top. Uh, there's another question in the chat box from Paul, Ian. Can you see that in the chat room? Ah, okay, sorry, I, I had the wrong tab at the bottom. I was on the uh, the one that said brain pop rather than the chat room, so I've missed everything that is in there, sorry. Um, right, let's go quickly click through. Uh, yeah, with um, with emails, what you can do is you can track every email that just contains a particular word. Um, so we have we haven't done that. What we've done is we to kind of cover ourselves. Every email that's sent throughout the school is automatically forwarded on to um, a, kind of a, an all mail account. So you can collect everything um, through there. But you can set particular words. Um, we have we've talked about for things like you know pupil to teacher email. Um, we have talked about the fact that uh, some teachers are quite happy to say to their children, I will not reply to any email. Um, for me, everything is kept. Even if I delete it from my, uh, my sent box, the child will still have a copy. So even if I was sending an inappropriate message to a child, um, or one that wasn't as um, professional as, as it could be, the child will still have a copy. So, you know, it's, and vice versa, you know, we, we, we say to the teachers, don't make this an onerous task, and I think I'm probably the only one that checks it, but the children know that I'm the only one that checks it. And you know if you're going to be that kind of teacher that checks it now and again, or doesn't bother, or checks it a lot. So um, we've made it that sort of thing that they know if they've got a question, they'll email me. Um, but generally, most teachers know not to, uh, you know, the, the children know not to email that teacher if they won't bother replying. They know to go and see them face to face instead. So um, yeah, I guess that kind of counts as our audit trail. I mean, everything's, everything's saved and sent, it's just email, so it's all there somewhere. Just going through, so I've missed all of this, so I was on the wrong chat window. Okay. Do you think there's any other questions I missed? I'll have a quick click through. Doesn't sound like there's any more questions, Ian. You have answered everybody's queries in one fail swoop. Um, what I found that really useful because oh, calls come back to us. <laughs> yeah, I found that really useful because I think, especially with the Google Apps domain, as you say, a lot of um, platforms that children are asked to use, they kind of they look quite childish. They look um, uh, they, they sort of have a different usability. And I think hearing that you can use the Google domain from year three is just is pretty inspiring um, and it sounds like you haven't had any major problems using it so I'll, I'll definitely be telling the schools that I know um, and pointing them in your direction to so they can come and get some inspiration um, yes you've shared your email there did you so you showed us your blog there Ian and that had a nice link to your um, ICT essentials book which I have my own copy of and I'll be looking to get it signed at BET this year. <laughs> I would definitely recommend to anyone else who hasn't read it that it's a really good read and it does answer a lot of questions 
that might you might have about Google Apps or using equipment in the classroom, visualizers, everything. It's all in there. So big plug for that one. Well done, Ian. Does anyone have any questions about BrainPop in general, about how you access the site? If you haven't had a uh, if you don't have a subscription to BrainPop, I can see Paul Benson there. I know you have a subscription to BrainPop. <laughs> Um, but if you don't already have a subscription to BrainPop, we, you can contact us through the site. We can set you up with a free trial. And we can even um, set up the Google Apps integration while you're trialing BrainPop. So you, you, that doesn't happen automatically, but we can do that for you. If you want to take out a trial to BrainPop, try it out in your Google domain. We can do that for you. Something else to mention is just that if you go to our blog, and you leave a comment on the blog post about today's webinar, we will send you a CPD certificate. So that's definitely worth doing. If, well, if you'd like the certificate, let me just find the link for you here. Um, Ray, can you just tell me where you can get the dashboard? All right, I'll put the microphone back. To Hi, yes, the uh, dashboard is um, basically the address that I've just put down in the box, but with your domain on the end. So, for example, mine is that, so yours is whatever. Or, alternatively, log into your email, and then um, if you go to settings and then manage this domain, providing you're the administrator. If you're not, well, you can't get the dashboard. Um, one thing I didn't mention is because you know we normally do Google Apps training in a day of about eight hours. We've had like 25 minutes or so. Um, what you can do is you can also set other administrators. So all of my teachers are mini admins um, called Help Desk, which basically means they can change children's passwords and that's it. I have full admin control. Everyone else just changes passwords. So you can set granular level controls as well, which is very very easy to do. Um, but yes, yeah, so it's Google.com/a slash whatever your domain happens to be called. So any more questions uh, before we bring this BrainPop webinar to, to, a, to a close? I'm just going to share the link that you will need to click if you want to leave a blog post and leave a comment on our blog and get your CPD certificate. And you can also, through um, if you go to the same place on our blog, you will find a list of all the upcoming webinars. And we, we will also be archiving all the webinars we've already done. So if you've missed any of this webinar, um, if you came in late or anything like this, it will be on our YouTube channel in the next couple of days. So you can go and find the start of the webinar. And that, ha that will happen for all our ongoing webinars. The webinar that we have coming up in a couple of weeks is with Danny Nicholson, who's going to discuss using whiteboard tools and brain pop. But I think that's it for our webinar today. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Ian. Um, I certainly love hearing about BrainPop being used in real life classrooms like this. If you have any questions about using BrainPop or signing up for a free trial, then you can contact us straight through the brainpop.co.uk website. And we're all on Twitter, so please come and find all of us there. Thanks very much. I look forward to seeing you again in a couple of weeks.